With technology reaching unprecedented heights, companies are looking at new ways to utilize the resources available to them in order to fulfill each individual customer's specific needs. Businesses are turning to such technologies as data warehousing and data mining in order to keep records on consumers' shopping practices so that they may tailor their advertisements and services to each individual. The results are astounding. Data warehousing is how businesses obtain and store useful consumer data regarding their customers' purchasing practices and habits. This data, when organized and warehoused effectively, can be used in the future to analyze these pra their practices and tailor their future business plans to better fit the needs of their customers. It is not simply just storing the data and warehousing it, but warehousing it in an effective manner to where the data can be accessed and analyzed quickly and easily. If the data is not available and if it is difficult to access, then it cannot be analyzed in a timely manner and thus it is useless. Think of, for instance, an actual mine. If the mine shaft is not organized and built properly, miners cannot access the places that they need to in order to mine the mine effectively. So in the same manner, warehouses must be set up to better serve the needs of those analyzing the data so that the businesses can analyze it effectively. Data warehouses store a vast amount of useful information that can be helpful to businesses, but in order for the information to be useful, it must be processed correctly. Data mining is how companies use all of the stored data in order to make reports and future forecasts on business practices and other important decisions. Data mining is often sought after in four different relationships, classes, clusters, associations, and sequential patterns. Companies that know how important it is to stay ahead use data mining to view trends over time and help them make critical decisions. Data mining takes what has happened during previous experiences and finding patterns to determine what will happen in the future. Data mining allows us to target specific customers who are far more likely to buy our product. Data mining tools work great when determining what customers are more likely to respond to certain ads and mailers. Data mining will also help us to determine what the income level of customers that live in certain areas is and how likely they are to spend money on our product. Data mining is used in credit card transactions, retail customer transactions, and telecommunications records. Also, data mining is now able to handle giant data sets used by major search websites such as Yahoo and Google. Moreover, data mining is concerned with the automatically obtained observational data. It is useful when this data refers to a whole population, for instance, all customers of a bank. In fact, many organizations who retain a data warehouse for all of their electronic data and these warehouses contain multiple databases that would provide data for mining exercises. An interesting characteristic of many modern data mining applications is that the data can be conceived as a data stream. A potentially unending sequence of data arriving at a high frequency, generated by a stochastic mechanism subject to unknown and abrupt change. A good example of this data stream is plastic card transactions. Cards are swiped through a point-of-sale terminal or an ATM followed by an authorization process. This authorization process involves fraud filters, which are often built on predictive models. A bank may process thousands of transactions per second, so there is no chance to update the filter as data arrives. OLTP and OLAP are two ways to analyze transactions and online query information. OLTP, online transaction processing, deals with data that can be linked to specific transactions or individuals. Records of PIN numbers, account numbers, and email addresses are good examples of OLTP. OLTP help, helps businesses with their internal operations and to link data to specific customers. OLAP, on the other hand, online analytic processing, <clears throat> allows them to gather a broader understanding of consumer behavior. OLAP essentially looks at the long-term data a company records and helps it to analyze the data so companies can plan for the future. This analysis can help businesses plan for peak shopping or traveling seasons or to help identify customer behavior in given holidays or months of the year in order to mold their business plans to accommodate the customers. While o OLTP focuses more on internal operations, OLAP looks at the broad picture and the market as a whole. 
Data mining serves a variety of functions for our business. For example, Target uses data mining to identify certain customers that may potentially be pregnant. This allows Target to reach the customer even before the customer is ready to start shopping for many baby items. Target uses analytics to look at what customers purchase and use that information to suggest products for customers to purchase in the future. For instance, if a customer is purchasing maternity clothes, then Target assumes that they will be in the market for things like cribs or car seats very soon, and they suggest these items to the customer either on the website or receipts that print specifically for these customers with coupons attached. Target's data mining is so in-depth that they can even determine what trimester a potential customer is in. Target estimates that data mining has led to a 30% increase in customer purchases. IBM provides data mining functions in a higher version of DB2 database. IBM DB2 is simply described as a database server developed by IBM. This data mining technology from IBM helps us to detect fraud, prevent customer churn, and analyze segments of customer and market baskets. There are several different types of DB2 that IBM provides. They help with the company's organization for processing, memory utilization, and security and scalability. Also, IBM DB2 is created to be cost efficient so that companies will be able to improve their database as well as saving money. The cost for a business to set up a data warehouse can be very expensive and if not budgeted for properly could end up hurting the business. Data warehouses are broken into two categories, startup and reoccurring costs. A few of the startup costs include purchasing hardware and software to ensure the warehouse is properly set up for use while most of the recurring costs are maintenance to ensure that the warehouse keeps functioning properly. Large businesses with lots of information to be stored are the main users of data warehousing. Many businesses try to find other alternatives or avoid data warehousing simply because the costs are too high. Many businesses are turning to what is called column stored databases which stores data in columns rather than rows. It's much cheaper and it is found recently to be much more efficient than the current data warehouses that some companies use. They are becoming more popular with companies and in the near future, companies will be faced with the decision of staying with their current data warehouse or switching to column stored databases. The cost of setting up data warehousing can vary. It depends on the designers, the developers, and the decisions they make along with the business owner. In data warehousing, it is important for the business to understand that while storing data electronically is becoming cheaper and processing this data is becoming cheaper and easier, they must also account for the new data that they will incur once they reach new clients and their client base starts to grow. As they gain new customers, this means added data and they must face the understanding that they have to adapt to an ever-growing number of information that must be stored and accounted for. This new data can mean added costs and businesses must budget and plan accordingly to accommodate this new data. While data warehousing can be costly, as we saw earlier with Target, who improved their sales by 30% using data mining, we see that it can be very beneficial for business. The ability to reach a customer before they enter the store and address their specific needs is, in essence, priceless. As businesses grow, consumers start to lose the personal feel of business. In this way, you are able to address each customer so that they feel that every business is addressing their needs personally. It adds a personal touch to shopping that people look for and will cause them to return to their store time and time again. Data mining, while it is controversial, is a useful tool for businesses to meet the ever-changing needs of customers and helps them to move their business in the direction of the consumer. Some argue that data mining is an overreach and intrusive, while others argue businesses need data mining in order to keep their businesses relevant. Data mining allows businesses to allocate resources into those branches of their business that will be most effective in the marketplace. This allows businesses to be more efficient and reduces the cost allocated towards dwindling commodities. The ability to reach the consumer before they step foot into the store or even leave their home is something no business should dismiss. With all of the modern technology and resources available in the current marketplace, all business owners should sit down and consider 
whether data warehousing would be beneficial to their business and if it is in their budget to implement such a system for their operation.